Hey guys, Coach Tommy here from the Sunnies and YMCA Sports Foreman Center. Today we're going to go through a quick athletic workout to kind of give us some mobility and a little bit of springiness for some of our more athletic base conditioning drills. All right, so first we're always going to start with our warm up, which is going to be on the floor, and then we'll get into a little bit more athletic movements as we go. We should work up a little bit of sweat doing these things. So to start, we're going to start on the floor on our back. We're going to go with what we call a supine cross connect. All right. So I'm going to take my left leg and my right elbow. They don't actually have to touch, but we want to get them as close as we can without lifting our head up off the floor. So my other leg is going to be straight. My, we're going to hold this position here, and then my arm is going to reach overhead. And I'm just going to kind of hold this position. And what I should feel is if I reach my arm long and my other leg long, I should feel my kind of trunk and abs doing some stuff and maybe a little bit of stretching along the front of my right hip and my left lat. I'm going to hold it for a second, relax, and then I'm going to go again. What we really want to emphasize here is a nice breath in through the nose, and then a full exhale out. All right, and then we'll switch. All right, again, I want to think about getting long with the other limbs and being able to come as close as I can, touching the elbow to knee on the other side without lifting my head up. And then a nice breath in and full breath out. And you can relax, and then we'll go one more time. All right, so as I'm trying to touch my elbow to knee, I'm gonna reach with the other opposite limbs in through the nose. Full breath out. We'll flip over, and we'll go with what they call a bird dog. Hands and knees are gonna be, hands underneath the shoulders, knees underneath the hips. I want my back relatively neutral, all right, which means I don't want it to be super sagging, and I don't wanna be at too high round to the ceiling. So I'm gonna kinda of find this like comfortable spot. I'm gonna reach out again, opposite arm and leg, and then come back in. Pretend there's a bowl of water on your back. Don't spill it. So you don't wanna be rolling out to the side. You just wanna go slow, extend, and then come back. What I should feel is some weight being put into the arm that's staying on the ground, and I should feel maybe a little bit of my stomach tightening up. We'll do one more on this side, and then we'll try the other side. All right, you're going slow. Think about, again, you're reaching out as far as you can, behind you, and in front of you. All right, and then we'll go with our hip cars. All right, so this is one where we try to get our athletes to really feel the muscles in the hip to control the limb. So we're going to start in what we call a 90-90 position. All right, so I've got one leg coming out straight and then across, and then the other leg is coming out to the side and then back. I'm going to get tall. My back foot is going to come up first, and then I'm going to lift my knee, and then come back down. You may feel this stuff get really tight and almost like cramp on you. That's okay. All right, if it's too much, don't go super high or don't go too long to hold it. Just try to breathe a little bit. So foot comes up first, and then knee comes up. All right, don't let this knee track forward. We want to keep it basically straight out to the side. All right, we'll do one more. Good, and then we'll switch sides. All right, so again, I've got this leg coming out and then across. This leg's coming out and then back. Foot comes up, knee comes up. All right, notice I'm not leaning too far over. I can a little bit, but I really want to try to stay as tall as I can with my hands on the ground. All right, we'll do one more. All right, and man, you should kind of feel this whole leg doing some stuff. Then we'll go into our side plank. I'm going to start. First, we'll go knees, and on the second time through, I'll show you how to do it on your feet. So knees are going to be bent, elbows directly underneath the shoulder. I'm just going to lift my hips up and then scoop forward. All right, and we'll go to 10 seconds. So five, four, three, two, one. If that was easy, we can go one leg in front, one leg back. All right, so I'll show you kind of from a side position. So we're here, and we're going to go up and then forward. Notice I have a straight line all the way from foot to head. We don't want our hips back behind us, right? We don't want our chest pushed out in front. We want to kind of push through the ground and then lift our hips up as high as we can. Three, two, one. So we'll show it again from the other side. Knees first, right? And we'll come up. We're gonna hold that position. 
five, four, three, two, one. And then I'll show you, right? Top leg usually goes in front. There may be some cases where we switch it up, but in this case, we'll always go top leg in front. All right, and then we'll go up, and again, get a straight line. You're gonna hold it. You should feel this underside doing some work, right? and maybe a little bit of kind of contraction along the upper shoulder and upper back. Five, four, three, two, one. Excellent. All right, so now we'll get into some of our athletic-based stuff. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go with what we call pogo hops. Pogo hops are you trying to bounce and then lift the toes up as you go in the air. So what it's gonna look like is kinda of like this. All right, five, four, three, two, one. All right, it's a little harder than it looks, so if you don't quite get it on the first try, don't worry about it. Just work on bouncing rhythmically. All right, and then we're gonna go right into what we call T rotations. So I'm gonna go in a push-up position. Feet are gonna be a little bit wide, and I'm gonna basically turn and reach up, and then turn the other way and reach up. All right? Notice my feet are also spinning with me, all right? so that my whole hip turns. Again, this is kind of like a moving side plank, which we already practiced a little earlier. All right, we're gonna do one more. Awesome. Okay, so what we're really trying to incorporate here is some of our warm-up drills in conjunction with some of our athletic-based stuff. Okay? So we're going to go back. We'll do our pogo hops again. Again, if you don't get them right in the first try, that's fine. Just think about trying to find rhythm. All right, so I'm just going to bounce. And as I jump, I'm lifting my toes up to the ceiling. All right, they don't have to be super high. You can just do these little bounces. And almost what you're gonna feel is kind of in the front of your shins getting a little tired, and that's okay. All right, so then we'll go back, we'll do our T rotations again. All right, so if I'm here, I'm gonna let my feet spin, and then I'm gonna reach to the ceiling. Come back, feet spin, reach to the ceiling. All right, I'm keeping my hips up, I don't wanna let them sag. Right, at the same time, we're working kind of some shoulder stability and some trunk stability as we go right back into some jumps. Right, lifting the toes up, finding a rhythm in your bounces. Five, four, three, two, one. It may not feel like it, but even you thinking about lifting your toes up will give you some of that contraction on the front part of your shin. All right. We'll do one more of our T rotations. And we're going to roll and reach. Roll and reach. Roll and reach. Roll and reach. All right. So next, we're going to go with a half Turkish getup. Okay. So we're going to start lying on our back, roll to an elbow, and then reach up. So a lot of these things are kind of working off of the thing we did before. So a half Turkish getup is gonna start with my left leg being bent, my left arm to the ceiling. I'm gonna roll to my right elbow, up to my right hand, and then lift my hip up. All right, see how I've got everything long and tall, and then we're gonna go back down. Up. Up, excellent. Let's try the other way. So right arm's bent, right knee's bent, and the roll, hand, hip. You notice how I get this hip as high as I can and that other foot is stuck to the floor. I don't wanna go up and lift my heel off the ground. I wanna keep it planted firmly into the ground. All right, and then we're gonna pair that with a bear crawl. So bear crawl, you guys can do it however you like, all right, in terms of your hips can move a little bit side to side. We're gonna go forwards and backwards about five feet. All right, what we don't want though is our hips too high. So we're gonna kinda keep this like tabletop position, 
we're going to lift our knees up and then opposite arm and leg. We can get a little swivel back and forth, right? but we want to kind of keep it to a slow, controlled movement. All right. As you start to get the hang of it, you can go a little faster. But again, our main concern is that we get the opposite arm and leg working at the same time. All right, so we'll go back to our Turkish getup, our half Turkish getup. In the following videos, we may show what a full Turkish getup looks like, all right, where we go from the floor all the way to standing and then back down again. So we'll start left knee, left arm, reach, roll, hip. All right, what's really good about this movement is we can actually, with a lot of our athletes, we put a weight in this hand, which forces them to again, get some good shoulder stability on that side, but also teaches them how to move a rib cage underneath an arm, as opposed to an arm over a rib cage, which is what most of the time we see in our training process. All right, so it just gives us a different ability to move the body and allow the brain to figure it out. All right, and then we'll go back to our bear crawl. And again, take your time with this, it doesn't have to be fast. It's more about getting this alternating arm and leg moving in unison and keeping our torso relatively in a stable position as opposed to either trying to get our feet right up to our hands. We wanna create a little space the whole time. All right. So next, we'll go with our downward dog position and duck walking. All right, so downward dog is basically a plank, driving your hips up and then back. We should feel a little stretch in our hamstrings and our calves, and even our upper back should get a little work. So again, we're gonna hold this nice position where our upper back is kind of big, our hips are up a little bit, we don't wanna to sag too much or squeeze our shoulder blades together. We're just holding this position and then driving heels to the floor, tailbone to the ceiling, and then back and front. All right? Almost think about pushing your hands through the floor to drive your hips up behind you. All right? Also, you can let your head go down between your elbows and shoulders. All right? We'll get one more. All right, and then duck walking, we're gonna kind of go into a little bit of a squat. Your heels can come off the floor, and then we're just gonna kind of go slow. All right, we'll go one more. And again, we should feel some legs doing some stuff. We're also getting our Achilles tendon to kind of get some stretch and some springiness in the bottom of the foot. Right, and then we'll go back to our downward dog. All right, really try to find some pressure through the hands and feel yourself pushing yourself up away from the ground. All right, and the more we can get our head and shoulders down to the ground, the more we'll get a little bit of a stretch in the upper back and posterior chain. All right, so then we'll go duck walking one more time. All right, you may have to be tall and do this. That's okay if you can't get all the way down there. Either one works. Just feel this stuff doing some work. All right, and then we're gonna to start to finish out with some bent knee holds and some prone shoulder uh, black burns. Legs are gonna be kind of straight out with a slight bend. We're gonna dig our heels down and just scoop our hips up. We should feel the back of our legs doing quite a bit of work. All right, you're just holding it. Make sure toes stay facing the ceiling. 
We don't want them turning out or turning in too much. And make sure we're not lifting our back up first. So we don't want to lift our belly button up. All we want to do is dig our heels down and peel our back pockets up off the floor. Three, two, one. All right, and then we're going to flip over. We're going to go forehead on the ground. Hands are going to be by our forehead. And we're going to go out to the side and around, touch our back, and then back around. All right, so go slow. Thumbs can go up to the ceiling. We'll do one more of those. All right, and then we'll flip over again. Legs are gonna be slightly bent. Scoop the butt up to the ceiling, back pockets up to the ceiling, and hold it. All right, so notice my low back isn't really off the ground too much. It's mostly just my hips. If I wanted to make it a little bit more difficult, I can take my hands and reach them up to the ceiling, keeping my head down, and I actually really feel some tension in the back of my legs. Three, two, one, we can relax. And we'll do one more. Hands are up, reach, tuck. Right, and you're just gonna hold that. Think about trying to drive your shoes down into the floor as hard as you can to peel your back pockets up to the back of your knees. Three, two, one. We'll flip over. Thumbs are gonna go up to the ceiling. We'll go up, out, turn, back around. Excellent. All right, so for our last thing, we're gonna do a breathing drill to get ourselves to kind of calm back down and really focus on expanding through the chest and getting a full exhale. All right, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna start with our knees bent, feel your feet flat on the ground. All right, we're gonna close our eyes. We're gonna go four seconds in, a two second pause, and then a six second exhale. So it should kind of feel like this. Eyes are closed, in for four, hold for two, out for six. All right, so again, we're doing inhales through the nose, and then you can breathe either out through your mouth or nose on the exhale. All right, so we'll go through three full rounds of it. So in for four, All right, what I want you thinking about is feeling the chest expand and the upper back getting kind of pushed into the floor. And then when you exhale, everything just drops down and compresses. All right, and that would feel like you inflating like a balloon and then exhaling and all the air coming out of the balloon. So we'll do one more. And you should just feel a little bit more relaxed and calm after doing that. 